Hey guys, welcome to my channel. This video is going to show you how to draw square and rectangular boxes in perspective. Drawing in perspective means you are drawing something to make it look 3D. Drawing 3D box illusions can be difficult to do correctly, especially if you want your boxes to be at a specific rotation or tilt. This video will show you how to draw a box at any horizontal rotation in perspective, and how to tilt a box on its side at any vertical rotation in perspective. Before we begin, we first need to understand what makes something look 3D. Perspective is the art of drawing solid objects on a two-dimensional surface so as to give the right impression of their height, width, depth, and position in relation to each other when viewed from a particular point. Things will appear to get smaller the further away they are from the viewer. Two boxes in reality can be the exact same size, but one can look a lot smaller simply because it's off in the distance. This is perspective. This is the 3D illusion we see every day. If you want your drawings to look 3D, then you will need to create the same illusion. For a box to look like it has depth, its farthest sides will need to be smaller than its closer sides. Edges of a box will need to taper from the closer sides to meet the farthest sides. These edges taper to meet one of the farthest sides, and these edges taper to meet the other farthest side. If a box is long enough, its long edges will converge to a single point. This point is called a vanishing point. Vanishing points are the places where things get too far away to be seen. You will need a vanishing point for each of the edges of your box that goes away from the viewer in a different direction. Square and rectangular boxes have a total of 12 edges. Four edges will go in one direction, four edges will go in another direction, and four edges will go in another direction. Edges going in the same direction will have the same vanishing point. Edges going in different directions will have different vanishing points. For this box, one vanishing point for four of my edges is at the edge of the page, and one vanishing point for four of my edges is off the page. The other four edges of my box do not need a vanishing point because they are completely vertical. If an edge of a box does not angle away from the viewer, then that edge will not taper and will not have a vanishing point. In most cases, this happens when a set of edges is angled 0 degrees or 90 degrees on your paper, being completely vertical or horizontal. You draw a box in one point perspective when your box has both 90 degree and 0 degree edges. You draw a box in two-point perspective when your box has only one set of either zero or 90 degree edges. You draw a box in three-point perspective when your box has no zero or 90 degree edges. The only time this doesn't apply is if you tilt a box with both zero and 90 degree edges directly to the left or right. This box will not have zero or 90 degree edges on the X and Y axis, but the turned edges are still perpendicular to each other on your paper. This means that the box will still have only one vanishing point, just like boxes with both zero and 90 degree edges. The turned edges will simply be at the true angle you want your box to tilt. The amount of vanishing points you will need for a box will depend on your box's rotation and tilt. You create vanishing points by drawing rays out from your station point. Your station point is where your viewer's eyes are. Each ray coming from your station point will have a vanishing point placed on it where it crosses the horizon line. The angle a ray goes out from your station's point's horizontal axis will determine the angle a side of your box rotates away from your viewer horizontally. Here's an example of a side of a box rotated zero degrees away from the viewer both horizontally and vertically. When a side is rotated zero degrees away from the viewer horizontally and vertically, it will show its true shape and will be a perfect square or rectangle. To rotate a side horizontally, keep your two vertical edges vertical and taper your other two edges towards a vanishing point you choose. If you want your side to angle away 22.5 degrees away from your viewer horizontally, then draw a ray out 22.5 degrees from your station's point's horizontal axis and make a vanishing point where it crosses the horizon line. This is your 22.5 horizontal vanishing point. Lines coming from this vanishing point will be a guide for your horizontal edges. A side rotated away from the viewer 22.5 degrees horizontally will become slightly distorted and will no longer look like a perfect square or rectangle. A side rotated away from the viewer at 45 degrees horizontally will become even more distorted. 
a side rotated away from the viewer 67.5 degrees will become even more distorted. A side rotated away from the viewer at 90 degrees will distort and squish together so much that the side might look like a straight line. This happens if your box's side is located directly above or below your vanishing point. In this example, the side of the box is a little bit off to the left of my vanishing point, so I can still see a little bit of its depth. If I continue to angle the side of the box past 90 degrees to 112.5 degrees, the side of the box will increase in depth and shape again, even more so at 135 degrees and even less distorted at 157.5 degrees. When a box is 180 degrees, it is the same angle as zero degrees. So at this rotation, it again looks like a perfect square or rectangle. Now let's put six sides together to make a box. Like I explained before, a box has a total of 12 edges. These edges make up six sides. Four edges will go in one direction, four edges will go in another direction, and four edges will go in another direction. This means I will need three vanishing points for my box, or vertical or horizontal lines to replace the vanishing points I don't have. If your box is truly square or rectangular, edges that go in different directions will come together at 90 degrees. This 90 degree angle is in perspective, however, so you can't check this by simply drawing a right angle on your paper. To make the edges of your box come together at 90 degrees in perspective, the rays you use to create your vanishing points on must come together at 90 degrees at the station point. Here's an example of when a box is rotated 0 and 90 degrees horizontally. You can see that the 90 degree ray and 0 degree ray come together at 90 degrees. I have a vanishing point on the 90 degree ray and the 0 degree ray does not have a vanishing point because it is parallel to my picture's horizon line. This makes the edges for this ray completely horizontal on my page. My other set of edges are vertical and are 90 degrees to the horizontal lines. Here's an example of when a box is rotated 22.5 and 112.5 degrees horizontally. You can see that the rays that make up these two vanishing points also come together at 90 degrees at the station point. My third set of edges will stay vertical. Here's an example of when a box is rotated 45 and 135 degrees horizontally. These two vanishing points rays will also come together at 90 degrees. My third set of edges will stay vertical. Here's an example of when a box is rotated 67.5 and 157.5 degrees horizontally. These two vanishing points rays come together at 90 degrees as well. My third set of edges will stay vertical. If you do not want your box to have vertical lines, then you will have to do something a bit more complicated. Not having vertical lines means that your box is either tilting up off the ground or that your point of view is in bird's eye or worm's eye view, which is not directly facing up or down. Bird's eye and worm's eye view happens when your horizon line is not in the center of your page. Direct bird's eye view is when your viewer is looking straight down at something. This will be exactly the same as your viewer looking straight out at something, except that your horizon line will not be on your page. This is because direct bird's eye view is a complete 90 degree shift where you look straight down at the ground instead of looking straight across the land to both ground and sky. Direct worm's eye view is when your viewer is looking straight up at something. This will also be exactly the same as your viewer looking straight out at something, except that the horizon line will also be off your page since this is a 90 degree shift where you are looking straight up at the sky. To draw a box that is not in direct bird's eye or worm's eye view, or to draw a box that looks like it is tilting up off the ground, you will need to follow these next instructions. To place vanishing points for this type of box, choose the vanishing points for your box's horizontal rotation, and then split one of those vanishing points in two directions, a point going straight above the horizon line and a point going straight below the horizon line. Your box will tilt towards the vanishing point you split. To determine how far up or down your split vanishing points need to be away from the horizon line, draw a ray from your station point at an angle that is halfway between zero and the angle of the ray going to the vanishing point you want to split. In this case, the vanishing point I'm splitting is on the 45 degree ray. So I'm gonna draw a line out at 22.5 degrees because 22.5 is the angle halfway between 45 and zero. At the point where this ray intersects the horizon line, draw angled rays out from this point until they are directly above or below the vanishing point you want to split. 
If you want four of your edges to tilt 45 degrees, then four of your other edges need to tilt 135 degrees because those edges will come together at a 90 degree angle in perspective. These vertical tilts are determined by how far the vanishing point's rays are angled away from being vertical. Your other set of edges go to the vanishing point you didn't split. Here's an example of me splitting the 22.5 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. Here's an example of me splitting the 45 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. Here's an example of me splitting the 67.5 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. And here's an example of me splitting the 90 degree ray vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. Splitting a vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees will tilt your box up at a 45 degree angle. Or it will look like the viewer is looking down at your box at a 45 degree angle. If you want to tilt your box more or less than this, then draw out rays accordingly. Here's an example of me splitting the 90 degree ray vanishing point at 22.5 and 112.5 degrees. And here's an example of me splitting the 90 degree ray vanishing point at 67.5 and 157.5 degrees. Please note that if you are drawing in worm's eye or bird's eye view and you want your box to look level with the ground, then you will need to place a picture horizon line on one of your vertical vanishing points. You will place your picture horizon line on your top vertical vanishing point if you want to have bird's eye view. And you will place a picture horizon line on your bottom vertical vanishing point if you want to have worm's eye view. Note that a picture horizon line does nothing to your vanishing points. It simply shows the point of view. The line that you base your vanishing points on should always be in the center of your page. If it is not, then your picture will look like it was cropped on either the top or bottom. People will usually center themselves with a picture when looking at it. So if a part of your picture's bottom or top is cropped off, then your viewer will center themselves incorrectly and will not be in the correct place to get perfect perspective. I'm guilty of doing this even in this very video. I wanted to show a close-up of this picture, but the picture didn't fit my video's dimensions. If I cropped equally from both the top and the bottom, my box would be cropped off, so I decided to crop only the top. You can see that my box still looks perfectly fine, it's just no longer in perfect perspective. The correct way to draw this box would be to make a whole new set of vanishing points that are based off a line that is in the center of my page. Since my picture horizon line is not in the center of my page, I will need to split a vanishing point, making one of my vertical vanishing points on my picture horizon line, and the other on a ray angled 90 degrees away. This makes the vertical lines on my box turn into ones that have perspective. The difference between these two boxes is subtle, which is why I can get away with cropping. Just realize that it is more correct to use vanishing points that are based off a line that is in the center of your page. To repeat what I said before, a horizon line that is not in the center of your page is only used to show the extent of your bird's eye or worm's eye view. If your picture horizon line is on one of your vertical vanishing points, then your box will look level with the ground in bird's eye or worm's eye view. If your picture horizon line is not on one of your vertical vanishing points, then your box will look like it is tilting up off the ground. In most cases, placing a picture horizon line for worm's eye and bird's eye view is unnecessary since the horizon line is usually outside of your page. It is in those cases where the picture horizon line is visible that this location will be important. If you are wondering how to split a vanishing point on the left side of your station's point's vertical axis, like I did here, just do the inverse of splitting on the right side. Draw a ray out from your station point at an angle that is halfway between 180 and the angle of the ray going to the vanishing point you want to split. Where this ray hits the horizon line, draw rays out from this point in the opposite direction. Here's an example of me splitting the 112.5 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. Here's an example of me splitting the 135 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. And here's an example of me splitting the 157.5 degree vanishing point at 45 and 135 degrees. If you have vanishing points already made on one side of your station's point's vertical axis, you can simply draw horizontal lines over to the space above or below the inverse angle to find its inverse vanishing points. 
As you can see, there are many ways to draw boxes in perspective. I hope this video helped you understand how to draw a box at any horizontal rotation in perspective, and how to tilt a box on its side at any vertical rotation in perspective. Thanks for watching. If you are interested in more tutorials about how to draw in perspective or how to draw, check my channel for more videos.